it's game day. Okay, maybe it's not, but I have the perfect recipe for your next game, bay, game day, Super Bowl, watch party, anytime you have football planned or even a tailgate, this recipe, you have to make it. It's a football shaped cheese ball. So you get your favorite cheese ball, but just by doing a smidgen more work, it's gonna be the cutest shaped football. And the fun part is, is you can freeze this and make it ahead of time. And we're gonna teach you all about it at the end of the video. Hi, my name is Carrie with eatingonadime.com and I'm on a mission to help you make delicious recipes on a budget. You can get the full recipe linked in the description below or you can go to eatingonadime.com and just search football cheese ball and that recipe will pull right up. Okay, the very first thing is we're going to start off with cream cheese. This has been softened at room temperature. It is very important that you do that because it's not gonna mix well together. We are going to do two containers of cream cheese. Let me just use my scissors to get this open. And we're gonna place this in a mixing bowl. And again, completely softened. It should be soft to touch, so that way it'll mix well. I don't know why, I'm just gonna go straight for my scissors. I'm struggling today, apparently. It's so soft and it's like falling apart in here. That's good. Then we are going to throw in, we need a half a teaspoon of garlic salt. We've got some Worcestershire sauce and a splash of hot sauce. You don't need a lot, but since this is for a game day and not like a holiday, I kind of want it to have a little zip. It's not, it's not super spicy, but it gives it a little zip to the recipe that you're really going to enjoy. And same with the Worcestershire sauce. Then we're going to do a packet of ranch seasoning mix. If you can't find a ranch seasoning, like I know some people that follow us in different countries, we do have a homemade ranch seasoning mix as well on eatingonadime.com. Then we're going to take our trusty hand mixer and mix away. Don't do this by hand. Use a hand mixer. It just makes it easier. You can do it by hand, but it's just a lot more effort. Okay, quick taste test to make sure it tastes amazing. Mm. Perfect. Now remember, we're going to add more ingredients. So if you think it's a little too salty, that's okay. It's supposed to be like that because as you add in the cheddar cheese and everything like that, it will get less salty. But the important thing is, do you like it? Because now you can add in a little bit more hot sauce because it's not spicy. So, but if you want it to be a little zippier, let's add in some more hot sauce. Or if you want a little more Worcestershire and then you can mix it in real quick before we add anything else. Now we're going to add in some cheddar cheese. You do not have to hand shred it since this is not melting. You can just buy the pre-shredded if you want to, but we're gonna go ahead and hand shred it because we're just fancy like that. We just think it tastes better. And so you need about two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. We like the cheddar cheese. It's just a good basic cheese for a cheese ball. I use it in almost all of my cheese balls besides my pizza cheese ball. But, but actually that's a perfect time to talk about. We love cheese balls here. They're the perfect appetizer. So make sure you go to eatingonadime.com and search cheese ball to get all of our really popular ones. The first one that comes to mind is the pizza one. It tastes like a pizza. Once you've shredded your two cups, you're just gonna add it in, but you don't need to stir it in. We're actually gonna hand stir this but we got a few more ingredients that we've got to add to make this the best cheese ball. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way so we can get it all stirred in. Now we're gonna add three green onions. The, I, don't, I recommend you keep this in there, don't skip it. The onion with the ranch just adds a lot of flavor. If you're not a fan, you can leave it out. And you can also, you could probably put in some like 
minced dried onions. It'll give a little bit of onion flavor, but these are so pretty in the cheese ball and they just add a crazy amount of flavor. I just love it, especially with our bacon and the ranch in there. Okay, off to the bowl they go. And the last thing we've got to do is chop up some bacon. We need about a cup of bacon chopped. One cup of bacon is about 12 to 16 slices of bacon. You want it cooked really crispy so that way you can crumble it up with your knife. Now, that being said, if you want to be extra lazy, just get some bacon bits and throw in. Now we're going to do half now and then half for the coating. As, can you hear it? It's just like falling apart as I run my knife through it. And that's exactly how you want it. If you have your bacon undercooked, then your cheese ball is kind of gummy and hard to eat. You want the bacon to be crispy and finely chopped. We're basically cheese ball experts over here. Don't invite me to a party without a cheese ball. Okay. Now we're going to mix it up. Get this out of the way. Use by hand because everything's so big and chunky, you want to get that evenly distributed throughout. Now that everything's mixed up, this is where I kind of differ from other people who make cheese balls. Most people will say to go ahead and put it, wrap it up, like dump it into a saran, like a saran wrap and place it in the fridge. I do things a little bit differently because I've been making cheese balls since like 1902, slight exaggeration. But what I like to do is I like to actually cover the bowl and put it into the fridge first. We're going to let this sit for about 30 minutes. What that does is it gets those cream cheeses and gets them hardened up again. And what is so nice about that is now we're going to dump it onto saran wrap to form our shape, but it makes it so much easier than if you do it right now when it's really soft. So take that tip, give us 20 minutes in, 20 to 30 minutes in the fridge, and then we'll be ready to assemble. Okay, it has been in the, it has been chilled officially. I'm gonna use the same saran wrap and lay it on the counter. Let's get this spread out. Good enough. Good enough. And what you're going to do is see it's a lot harder now. And we're just going to plop it on here. That's the professional term, plop it. Now it's not going to be as firm as like regular um, cream cheese because we've mixed stuff with it. So keep that in mind when you're like, this isn't hardening. Let me go clean off my hands real quick. Okay, hands are clean. Now we're going to roll it up. So all I'm doing is trying to form it into a ball. So that way we'll be able to roll it. Let me just squish this together. So I kind of probably should have cut a little bit bigger piece. So you start with the ball shape. Once you kind of have it in a ball shape, then you're going to start forming it into a football shape. I like to kind of leave it a little bit flatter on top. That way we can lay our lines on really pretty. And then you just want, once you have it in kind of an oval shape, you're going to pinch the ends and just use your hands to smooth it out how you like it. And then we're ready to coat it. For the topping, you are going to need some pecans and the rest of that chopped bacon. Now a little tip, you can throw this back into the fridge just to keep it cold while you're getting all of this together because that way it stays nice and firm, making it easier to coat. You're going to need a third of a cup of chopped pecans and the rest of that bacon. And we're just gonna combine them in the bowl. And I'm just going to give it a quick toss to kind of stir them together. Then you're going to dump it out onto a plate. 
on that plate, I kind of pat it out to make a thin layer so that way we can coat our cheese ball in that mixture. It gets just a smidgen messy, but that's okay. So we're gonna throw this right on top. And you can use this to hold it if you don't wanna get messy, but honestly, I just get messy. So I kind of just roll it around to get the coating on the top and then for the sides, just kind of roll it around. You don't have to worry about the bottom because that's just going to sit on your platter, but you can coat that if you want to. Another way is you can sprinkle it and pat it. So you're getting the pecans and the bacon all throughout and that's what's going to give us that pretty football color. I'm going to set it down here. And then I like to just go through and kind of press it on so I can get all that coating mixture everywhere because the more you get on there, the prettier and more of like a football it's going to look. Look how pretty that looks. So don't panic and don't overthink it. You can lay this on top if you really want to be accurate, but it's going to be adorable no matter what. Now these are going to be, we're going to move this over and we're just going to place it right on top. Kind of give it a push in for them to stay. Again, don't overthink it. And it's okay that they don't go all the way down to the sides. Next, we need our line for the middle. Mm, I want it a little shorter and square it off. Kind of straighten it up a little bit. Beautiful. And then I'm going to take this piece to measure it for my laces. Again, it doesn't have to be accurate. You do you. I'm gonna straighten it up. And I'm just cutting that into thirds. That one might not be long enough. But that's the fun part is you're just using your cheese and laying them over. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another one. And you get to decide how many you want just until you like it. Or like, I might want to go back and make these just a little bit thinner now that I see them on there. But that's just because I'm a little picky. Ta-da! Isn't he so cute? All that's left is to add your favorite crackers. Now, with cheese dips, I like to do a variety of crackers. Saltines. These are some Italian herb flatbreads. Um, I said saltines. Saltines work, but they're not my favorite. I meant Ritz crackers. Um, any kind of flatbread pretzels are actually delicious too hi samson my dogs are really excited about this can you tell they're hoping i drop a piece but whatever crackers you want i like to fill it all the way around and it's super fun festive and delicious and as you can tell it's really easy to make now the hardest part is to not eat it before people come over but i want to give you a couple tips i highly recommend you put this on your counter for about 20 minutes before people come over because you want it to soften to room temperature. You can keep it in your fridge until you're ready to eat. It'll last in your fridge basically as long as it is wrapped up, whatever your cream cheese would expire at. But I would probably keep it in my fridge for just a few days, maybe three days. You can actually freeze this and we have a post on how to freeze cheese balls, but you're just gonna wrap it up. We wrapped it up in saran wrap and then we wrapped it up in foil and threw it in the freezer and it defrosted great. I will say that when you defrost a cheese ball, you just leave it on your counter or put it in your fridge. Um, we did it for Christmas to test it out and it was wonderful. It's a little crumblier than a regular cheese ball that was made fresh, but it's still really delicious. So you can throw this in if you want to or if you have leftovers and want to make it. Okay guys, it's time to test it out. Once it's come to a little bit closer room temperature, it'll be easier to actually cut Look at it, yummy! It's so good and it's beautiful. 
put it on your favorite cracker and it's ready to eat. I cannot wait to try it. Okay, I gotta have a bite before we finish chit chatting. Mm. Mm. It's delicious. I love this cheese ball and you're, it's even better now that it's festive and ready for game day. Make sure you head to the link in the description for the full recipe plus even more tips and tricks we have for you. You can also go to eatingonadime.com. We have an entire page dedicated for recipes that are perfect for game day. You do not want to miss out. Plus, we post brand new recipes every single day. Thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on because I don't want you to miss our next family-friendly recipe video. I will see you next time in my kitchen. Bye, friends.